Hi everyone and welcome to a new video in our UE4 tutorials. Now I suspect this video will be uh, numerous parts and this was the video that was voted on by my patrons and my YouTube members so thank you to everyone who's voted and thank you for your support. In this video we're going back to our doors but in particular we're looking at how to make diegetic wid widgets uh, inside the world and what these are basically widgets that are part of the actual world that you can interact with uh, to do certain things. So what we're going to do in this episode, or this mini-series, so to speak, is we're going to make the door have a keypad that we can click on and interact with to insert a code. If the code is correct, it'll open the door up for us and unlock it. So obviously this is very much used in a lot of um, RPGs and FPS RPGs like Outer Wilds and uh, Outer Worlds, sorry, and Fallout. Um, so it's quite a common thing. But you can also use it for like computers and other things like that. So let's get started. So I've got my door here. Um, I've already done the code to make it open and close. Um, at the moment it's locked. And it locks, it flashes. But um, if I show you the code for that. Um, we're not going to go into too much detail into the door code because I have plenty of videos covering that already. But let's give you the general gist. So the door comprises of the door and a volume for the trigger volume. On the trigger volume we're checking the overlaps for begin and end. And when we begin it, we enable input, and we end it, we close the door and disable input. When we've got input enabled, the E button will work. So when we push E, it's going to check whether or not the door is locked. And if it is locked, do the flashing light thing, which is what this function does. And open door calls the open door function. Uh, so the open door function is part of this door animation, um, which sets the variable to be is open. Update the light on the door to make it go green. And play the animation. Okay, closed door, ears open has become a false, change the light back to red, and reverse the animation. Okay, and we've got sounds on here too uh, that will play. And here's the light flashing for the door when it is indicating it is locked. Okay, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here on what this setup is. If you want to know how to do doors, I've got plenty of videos about how to do doors, so by means help yourselves. What we're looking at doing today is more of the widget focused stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is design our keypad widget. So our keypad is going to be a UI element. So go to user interface, new widget blueprint, and we're going to call it keypad underscore UI. And open this up. Now we don't need a canvas panel, we can get rid of that. And um, but we will need a vertical box. The vertical box is going to store various elements vertically, so all its contents get stored vertically. So the first element we're going to have is we're going to have a border to this. So we're going to go and add a border from our palette into our hierarchy. Okay, so in our border, we can now select that and go over to the right hand side details panel and choose various options. And the options I'm going to say is mostly just change the brush color. So I'm going to choose a medium gray, like so. Sorry, meant to be the other way around. Border first, then vertical box. So if I put that up there, uh, let's replace this with the child, and put a vertical box inside that border. There you go, that makes more sense. So now we've got a vertical box in there, we're going to add uh, another border to it. And this border is going to be the sort of top display that shows what current code you've entered. So in there, we're going to set it to a darker background. So I'm going to change the brush color here to a dark background which I've already pre-made and I'm going to drag my text into it as well okay there's my text so let's change the size of this I'm going to do a size of 64 and it's going to be center aligned and if I want I can change the padding on this to be a bit more significant we would do not that sorry change it on but yeah change that one to five and we can change the border here to 20. There you go. Okay, so that's our top bar done. Next are all the buttons. And the buttons are formed into a grid. So if I search for grid in my palette, and I will use my grid panel. So drag that in to your vertical box. So we've got two elements here. We've got the border top part here and the grid panel down here. And the grid panel is going to comprise of multiple buttons. So to save save a lot of effort and time, what we're going to be doing is we're going to make a, one button and just duplicate it. 
but we're going to make it as a sub widget. So let's close this for now and create a new sub widget. So new user interface widget blueprint. We call it keypad button underscore UI and open this up. Again, we don't need a canvas panel. What we do need though is a button. And on our button, we need to put a border. And finally, some text. So let's design the look of our of our um, button. So my button here, I'm going to change the uh, background color of this to be zero on the alpha channel, so it's see through. I'm then going to change my border to fill the whole lot. So if I go to fill horizontally and vertically, and I'm going to change my brush color of this to my dark gray that I've already made before. We we'll click on text block and I'm going to change its horizontal alignment and vertical alignment to the center and change the text to be center as well. And I'm just going to, in the text field, just going to put in zero, like so. So now, if I were to change this from field screen to desired, this is what the button will look like in the game. It's not really button like, it's not very useful. So, what we could do is put a size box inside of that to sort of stretch it out. So, on your border, we're going to uh, right click. And wrap with, and we'll choose size box. And on the size box, we're going to change the width override and the height override to be 64, uh, no, 1 to 8, sorry, 1 to 8 by 1 to 8. And there's our button. It's got a bit of padding on it, we can get rid of. We don't need to worry about padding. So I'm going to change the padding here to 0. And chat padding here to 0 as well. So you get a nice flush button. You compile. So you've got a few elements we need to sort out on this button to make it work. So first thing I'm going to do is on my text field here, I am going to change the is make it is variable top right, and we're going to call this one button digit text. And on that, it's, why are we doing that? Is because um, we need to change the text inside of it uh, in the game. So when we add the buttons, we can change which uh, digit will be on this button. So to talk about talk about no, sorry talking about the digits, we go into the graph. So in your variable list, we're going to add a new variable, and this will be called digit, and it's be an integer. We make it instance editable and exposed on spawn, and click compile. So. What we can do is on this event pre construct, we can use that to set the digit to the text. Now, pre construct basically is like the construction script where it will change stuff in the editor so you can see it working. So, in here, we're going to drag our button digit text out, which we made available earlier. And from there, we're going to tell it to set the text to our digit. Choose get and plug that in. You'll convert a digit into a text value and plug it into our set text. So what that means is, for example, if I were to change that digit over here to a default value of say two, and go to my designer view, it will change there as well. But I want default value to be zero. Okay, next thing we're going to do is make an event dispatcher. So we want to be able to tell when this button's been clicked to everything that this button belongs to. So on the event dispatchers, choose new event dispatcher, and we call this one button pushed. With it selected, go into the details panel beneath that, and you'll find a section called inputs. Choose new parameter, and we're going to call this one digit, because we want to pass through which digit was just pushed. So if we do this and click compile, we can now use this event dispatcher to be called. Now to call it, we click on the button variable up here and choose on clicked. So when this button is pushed, we're going to use the button pushed event dispatcher. So drag your event dispatcher out and choose call. And this will make, basically make a, a shout out that this button has been pushed and the digit is what's been pushed. Okay, so basically shout it out. What we need to do to our keypad then is make it so it listens out for that shout. 
and react accordingly. So we're going to click uh, compile and close that. Now we can return to your keypad UI and in here in our grid panel we're going to insert numerous keys. So I'm going to go into my user created and drag in my uh, keypad button like so and there it appears. And over here on the right hand side you can see I can set a digit I want to be used here to 1 and it will change as of when I want it. So I want to add two more to that one so I'm going to control W to duplicate and using these arrows I'm going to position them. Select each one and change their value to be whatever you want. And you'll do this for all nine of the buttons. So I'm going to squeeze more in here. So I'm going to control W and push that down. And this one will be four, for example. If you want to see how the keypad is going to look in the end, we can go to change fill screen to desired to see the final look. So keep going and we're going to add these in. I'm going to speed this bit up in the video. Okay, so there's all my buttons inserted into my grid panel. I'm just going to tell this grid panel now to be center aligned in this whole entire field. So click on your grid panel and click center, center. So now it will fill out the center of our keypad. You might want to put some padding on it to match the border of your uh, top bar here. So I'll put 20 in there, padding there for that. So I'm going to put 20 in here as well. And it should match accordingly. Okay. So how are we looking? I think that's looking pretty good. So all we need to do now is make it so we can tie that event dispatch we made to this keypad. So go to your graph and in here we're going to set up an array of all our buttons. So I'm going to do this on the construct. So as soon as this thing's made, we're going to make an array. So drag your first button out, which is get, and from there go make array. And from there, we're going to add loads more pins. There you go. And simply just drag each button to that list. So there are all our buttons. And I'm just going to space them out a bit so we can actually read them. There you go. So we've got an array of these buttons. And on the construct, we're going to do a for each loop for this. So for each loop. And for each of those, we're going to uh, bind that button push event. So go bind, and you'll see bind event button pushed. And that'll only appear up if you drag from the array element. So go from the loop body into your bind event, and we need to tell it what event's going to be called when we bind uh, when we push a button. So in here, I'm going to make a custom event, and this one is going to be called. Um, let's say uh, button pushed, okay, basically. So because our event dispatcher, this won't like this connection, okay, you're getting an error. Because our event dispatcher has a variable on it, it has that code digit where you pass through. So on button pushed here, we need to go to make an input for this, and we're gonna call it digit, and that's gonna be an integer. It has to match exactly the same, so compile, and drag that red square to that red square, hook those up like so. So now whenever any of those nine buttons is pushed, this event will get called with the digit that just called it. So from there, we can now pass that through to our string up here, our text filled up here. I'm just gonna change this to zero, 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 so you can see what it looks like, and hit compile. So that's what the final thing will look like. So on the graph, uh, we need to make a variable for this. We're going to go new variable and we call it current code. And this will be a string. 
okay and click compile now on button push what we're going to do is as when we push the button we're going to drag our current code out choose get and append this digit as a string so you can drag that over and it'll convert it to a string this will now get set back into current code So whatever the current code it is, it will add this digit to the end of it and store it. We then want to check the length of that current code. So drag from current code here and go len to get the length of the code. So it's four digits. That's when we want to do the check to say that we've uh, finished the code and need to check the code. So on len here, we're going to drag out and go less than or equal to integer. Type in four, we've got a four digit code. Just change that to whatever, how many digits you want it to be. And push B and click for the branch. So if it's true, we're gonna do another event dispatcher on our keypad. So we go event dispatcher, new one. And we call this one uh, code entered. And this will need an input, it's a new input. And this will need the uh, code that's been entered should be a string and we also need the uh, keypad itself keypad and this would be a keypad UI click compile drag that event dispatcher out and choose call plugging that in and the code is going to be our current code variable and the keypad is going to be itself so drag in a reference to self and we're done here we can click compile and that is it so now we've done with the UI the next part we're going to add the UI to our keypad uh, our keypad to our door so we can see it inside the game and start interacting with it thank you for watching if you want to watch that next part right now head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley where you can catch that episode plus many others uh, all for just one dollar Big shout out and thank you to all my supporters on Patreon and on my YouTube members. Wouldn't be doing this without you guys. So big shout out and thanks to all of you. In that case, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.